Well, folks, this week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're tuning some new cans for the Monticello repeater site. We are installing some additional electrical outlets and pass-throughs in the Incom trailer, putting in some local networking capabilities in the Incom trailer. Oh my, that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right. I need us some need some tools too, Don. Uh, yeah, and a straight slot screwdriver or a quarter inch nut driver. I got a nut driver in my. Doing with that. El Car Toolbox, just for you. All the stuff. There's a put that in the way that you tune these cans. And we're going to bring them down to uh, the frequency that Monticello has. So if we look at the display, this is the pass. And this is the notch. So what we want to do is we want to move this pass over here. Because this is the uh, high frequency input. So this is the... The notch is looking funky. Yeah, it will. How do you tell what the loss is? Well, this is 5 dB increments. Each vertical grade is 5 dB. So, we're going to change it to 2. So, this shows about almost 4 dB of insertion loss. See, I want to get that little peak of that hump. Okay, so now what we'll do is change our thing back there. Now we're going to look at our little doodad down there. That's our notch. And our notch is way off. So... So now what we're going to do It was looking better, when, wasn't it? Earlier? Yeah, before I changed the uh, Before you moved the notch Mm-hmm So that shows minus 81 and minus 11. So that's like... And I got 10 dB of attenuator right now. Let's try and find out where zero is. That attenuator, there's a note that says that it's it's off by 6 dB. Well, 
What are we trying next? We're going to tune the other side. Okay. See how much it changes. Yeah. So we do need that in there. That isn't right. Make sure it's better than that. Because we've got half a dB on the receiver. Which is really good. Yeah, I'm saying. Wish my antenna was that good. See how banging on the cans affects them? Yeah. That's why you want them mounted rigidly in your rack. Well, see, now it shows that our transmit insertion loss went up to 2.2 uh, .2 dB. Afraid of that. Yeah, I'm not seeing a change. Minus ten. Oh, wait a minute. Let's try these cables are. Five on that one, and let's find out. So we now have a spare duplexer. Yep. For the Monticello repeater. Yes. That looks so much prettier. What do we got here, Don? This is a box for our inlets and outlets of our coaxial cables and power cables. Nice. And the back panel comes off or how does it well, this front panel will come off for us to work in there if we need to be we will take a hacksaw and cut out this to go over that door down there and that way that'll allow everything to come into the inside okay alrighty so we'll have to make some modifications but yep and then that will go more or less like that go right there very nice and then we've got all the plugs that we can it's knock out back. for the cable. We can just come along here and put one, two, three, four, have whatever for our coax of cables in and out of here or whatever we want, you know. And we'll run our AC in here or whatever, you know, so. And you just had this in your personal inventory? Yeah. <laughs> I found it, I found it uh, back there in the shop. Did you? Back in there. I, said, oh, man, I, I think that'll work right there, so. It had been something at once upon a time, and right. 
I think it's I think it's even got some 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 cordage in it. But from another from another project. Uh, whenever, whoever, K-A-4-U-H-L, whoever that was. So you already had some for AC, well, didn't you? See, that's where these come in here. Right. Because there was a, see these two two holes right here? That's where there was a separate metal panel in there that had some some big relays and some connections on it and all this. Uh, this system all worked on. And this come in here and tied into all that system and everything. Was this the same type of box you used for the relay you used for the heater up at the 88 site? You're on the right side. You're on the right side, of course. Right. That's what it was made for once upon a time, somewhere or another, you know, and so forth. So. And we can take, we can probably take something like this here and, and feed that in there and and uh, even take a end or whatever and, and come out inside of here. And that way you've got a 120 volt outlet there and plug it into 120 volts here and you've got 120 volts inside of here for outside if for you outside. To plug an extension cord in. Right. So reusing reusing it. Alright now let's see if I can get a pair of some and kind of like yeah it's alright. It's it's a little muggy but is it using an SSD or no? What's that? I don't know. Not I'm sure. not sure if the inside I haven't opened it to right. Good, I got the screwdrivers to look. Actually, it's missing a screw. It originally came with Windows 8. All right, so we we have five volts and nine volts. <laughs> so. I haven't been saying anything. What are you talking about? Oh, what do you got going over stuff. here, Mike? I'm building a network. So we're. I probably already so, got some 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 stuff already made up over there with, and all you have to do is take a screwdriver and turn it up to nine volts if you need it, or okay, and hook right into the twelve volts. So, this is a GL inet called a slate. It's a little miniature travel router, mm -hmm. for lack of better terms. It is capable of attaching to this port with uh, either like an attached to your phone with a cable like this. This mm -hmm. is an A, right. USB A to USB C. Right. And it can be your WAN port. Um, it's set up, I believe, this can be your WAN port as well. So uh, if we had some sort of other internet access device right. that was Ethernet, we could plug it into there. Like a Starlink or something Correct. like that? Correct. So it's got two LAN ports on it here. It's got power via a uh, micro USB. So I was thinking we could use this. I don't have any way to mount this to, like, you can see, no mounting holes. Right. So I would have to come up with a way to mount it to a wall, uh, which wouldn't be impossible to do. It's very lightweight. It's pretty, pretty And you've tiny. got a D-Link switch over there? So this is, this is a router. This is the router that was given to us. So... Uh, it has no way for me to hook like a USB or hook up a phone eat directly to it. There's no USB port on it, so I can't can't think about doing that. So this would be if we're going to have Starlink or some other means mm -hmm. of getting internet right here. It's uh it's DC, takes five volts as well. This is just five volts with the USB. Okay. And then this right here is a pretty heavy little guy. This. This is a TP-Link Pro gigabit switch, so it's four ports. It's technically five, but you would probably use this as your uplink right. into the this router. or this, yeah. whatever. Uh, but it uses nine volts. 
It's so the fourth. We can't we can't standardize too well. And it does have the uh, bracketry on the back where it could be on the wall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So pop a couple screws into the wall, mm -hmm. and you could slide it in. Actually, and then we have a laptop that was donated to us as well. Yeah. So this is just an older Lenovo. It's got a Core i5 in it. I was wrong. It's a Core. Uh, actually, the the old desktop that we recycled was just a Core 2 Duo. But this is a Core i5, so it that's it, not that's not bad for us. No, it's for it's going to work. And, whatnot. and I mean, this on top of the all-in-one that we mm -hmm. have mounted in the panel over there. Mm -hmm. The whole goal of this network is to be able to network them together. So sure. this one over Wi-Fi, which is why we would use either this or this because this is both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, right. and this is as well. And it would allow us to use any number of laptops on field day or other events where we, we have people out working mm -hmm. different stations and not necessarily inside here in the trailer. They right. could be outside. And, you know, we could have somebody set out in the field over there with antennas and running a digital station and someone sitting in here working sideband and then somebody sitting somewhere else doing CW. Right. And all of them could connect back and we would just set up the main computer in here to be a server. Uh, since, since we use the uh, N3 FJP software right. for logging, that can be set up as we have one as a server and all the rest of them as clients. And they all just talk to each other. So anytime somebody enters something here, it automatically gets saved to the database. All right. Well, those are the parts we're working with today. And I'll come back and visit with you as we get further along. Okay. All of that. Right. That's my primary goal right now. It's so, Don, you've gone ahead and, and created your box that you're going to cut out. That, that will cut out and fit into that opening down there. That right. Way. So. Cool. And right. this here, these four holes here. Are your mounting, mounting holes? Will mount the box to the wall. To the wall. Okay, use the today. All right. I thought there was an LED for this. Maybe not. Usually they do, don't they? I thought it had one. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. But hey, we have power on the wall. Hey, get a light on that so. thing. And I got to figure out. It's probably. I never reset this, so it's probably still broadcasting my. The old SSID? Yeah, the one from my house, because that's where I used to use this. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I need to. That's it. It's probably just 2.4. Uh, if you saw, yeah, this is only two points. Yeah, the router's capable of both. But. Properties. So now it's thinking we're at my house. I'm just making sure I'm connected. All right. I'm Wi Fi connected to it, I think. <laughs> I thought I was. One, two, one, six, eight, one, one, right? I am connected to it. Let's come back to here. One, not one, which is this. Does the laptop have an IP? Say what? Does the laptop have an IP? Yeah, but I'm gonna. Uh, IP has no IP. What happened here? Sorry. Router should be doing DHCP, right? Let me look at something to make sure I didn't have a button pressed like this one. Can't save settings, check one or more. I don't understand. Okay. Thank you. What's that? You got to bring the camera and film Lauren delivering water. Small hole to a bigger hole.
this is to give your jigsaw plenty of room. Yeah, we're gonna Knockouts. Knockouts. Yeah. Knockouts. And just like that, we got a bigger hole. Just like that. And when we get ready, we'll see, we'll take the, whatever it is, probably something like this here. Uh huh. When we put those coaxial fittings through there, see, we'll knock it out like that, and that'll go right through the hole. Nice. Trying to keep you safe there, Mr. Dog. Oh, well, you'll file that stuff down. All right, well, I am bad in the uh, GLI for whatever reason. I might have to... And that'll raise up just a little bit, too, Don, won't it? Yeah, it'll come up if we want to raise it just a little just bit. Just a little bit, yeah. See, a little bit on there, enough to cover that little crack up there. Mm -hmm. Maybe a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch or something like that, and then put a screws in there. And... Right. There we go. We've got the disembodied thing from Adam's family. Remember? <laughs> the hand, yeah. yeah, the hand. A uh, plug on that, bring on, plug it right in that bottom on there, or like that. And that way you got power here all right. right. the time. So. And like I said, we can put uh, coaxial caves there. We can put them here. And then, and then we can go in um, either place or over here, either place or whatever, and put four of the 
uh, BNC connectors over there for your security cameras. Oh, for the cameras. That's right. That was the other thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then you just could come in here and plug in one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four up to your unit there. Right. Do we have the chassis mount BNCs? Uh, I've got some. I don't know where I've got chassis mounts or not. I'd have to look. If not, we probably know where we could come up with some. Right. You want to get a picture? I downloaded that a long time ago and printed that bad boy out because it really helps me make connectors, cables. I'm probably going to get comments like people, go, oh, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> You know what? My whole house I wired myself, so I'm doing it wrong. I did it wrong, right? That's right. There's the one <laughs> missing screw. Where'd you find it? Out there. Oh, okay. Eagle Eye Dawn. That's and Eagle Eye Dawn. And oh shoot! Oh, what's he there? Find all the time that there's power on that. So. so we'll use that cable from the strip. Yeah, from the power strip down to the, to the box. To the box. And that way we can connect the AC into the box here for drop cord going outside. To right, to power whatever, whatever. Equipment or whatever. Nice. All we have to do is put the uh, female end on the other end, right? Right. Now put, take this off of here. Right. And put that on the put other it end. Put on there after we get it through the fitting. Right, on the box. Yeah. Just for that. Really make sure this guy's snugly up against. Uh, I, well, my motto to people who complain about things in the ham club is, I said, you show me a better way. Shut your mouth. Or either put out or you know, well, this put up or shut up. We give you a full round image of what it's going to look like. And let's see. That's the only one I need for now. I'm not going to push it back in yet. Let's make sure the power came on. Look at that. Look That's at what that. they call power. Power on it, oh, dude. I just unplugged it. Yeah, it's only this far on the back. Yeah, yeah. About, what, two inches? Obvious over here. Have to know. Alright. I just want to make sure. Me. He's always filming me <laughs> making mistakes. I make lots of mistakes. So I think I think that's gonna be an okay angle. What do you think? Yeah. We're gonna test it. I'm gonna drop the screw in that hole and see what happens. And we are going to see if yeah, it worked. Bad boys in place. Power. Just plug her in and see what happens. We need a new power strip right there, by the way. Power's on. All right, folks. That's going to wrap up this video. Tuning some cans, uh, doing electrical and coax pass-through work on the uh, MCOM trailer, and also adding some localized networking to the MCOM trailer. Just a few more of the projects we have. Uh, there's more to do on our trailer. But that's going to wrap it up, folks. We will see you in the next video. 73.